Hidey ho, neighbors. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's been kind of slow. Got a lot of stuff happening, but it's been quiet really a lot on the news front. But I've been trying to go over a lot of stuff. There was three more earthquakes today, and we'll go over that and discuss that also. First, I want to read you 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that the gospel I preached to you, which you have received and on which you have taken your stand. By the gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I have received, I passed on to you as the first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and raised on the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe in that, and you have faith in Jesus and what he did, you are saved, you are sealed, and you're ready to get out of here. Ephesians 2.8, For the grace ye save through faith, and not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, like I said, yesterday we talked about the earthquakes, and what <clears throat> the Holy Spirit had gave me was that uh, there are scriptures. But then today I got another message about, the, about this, and evidently you... Okay, say that uh, you're looking these up for yourself. You can actually, God will talk to you through these. So my message might not be the same as yours. So if you're looking up the earthquakes, look up ones that are in diverse places. Like yesterday there was, uh, or two days ago there was one in Ohio, stuff like that. The ones that pop out are the ones that's in the news. They're messages. And God will speak to you through them. And... I don't like I said I told everybody I said it uh, just popped in my head I knew something was uh, supposed to happen on the 19th we got some major earthquakes that day and then when I went and checked it out the Holy Spirit said look it up in the scripture and told me where to go in Genesis now it happened again today to me and today it was different today I was supposed to go to Exodus so it is changing it's not going to stay all in Genesis so Today's, when I went to Exodus, there was a 6.8 today and a 6.2, and then they, the one was 5.6, then they downgraded it, and we checked it also. The one in California was right off the coast of California, and these were the ones that was in the news. So we looked it up, and then I heard Exodus, and that's Bonnie McCoy heard it, Exodus. So then we looked it up. Okay. So, the first one, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That was Genesis 6, 8. That the sons of God saw, I see, no, hold on, I messed up. We did two different comparisons. Let me go back. Okay, Enoch, it was, I see, that was on part of the something else we was looking at. Exodus 6, 8. And I will bring you into the land concerning which I did not speak. I swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. That was the 6-8. And I will bring you into the land. Concerning, that's funny, because where are we going? We're going into a new land. I thought that, I mean, this, I guess this was for us, for a lot of you on the channel, but maybe if you all look it up, it might be something different for you. God might give you a different message. Exodus 6-2. And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. So he's letting me know, hey, I am still in control. Yeah, we've not left yet. And this is stuff that I truly needed to hear today. That don't worry, have faith, keep the hope. I am the Lord. Then we looked at 5, 6. And it is, afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told the Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel, let my people go. Ain't that funny? That's where we're at. We're getting ready to leave here in the rapture. Let your people go. That you may hold uh, fast unto me in the wilderness. Okay, then we looked up. There was a, a downgrade to one of the things uh, of the earthquakes, and we looked it up. And it said, that one said, the Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and ye make them rest. For their burden so that's where we're going is we're going to go rest and once again these come out exactly the way they are supposed to i mean it's just crazy but they are messages now what i'm telling you today we was told to go to exodus now today if you go look these up the 6.8 let me say them again 
And remember, if you're looking for these, look for strange patterns, because that's what I go for. These was in the news, so that's why I knew that there was a message. 6.8, 6.2, 5.6, and a 5.5. And when I was led to those, it led us right to Exodus. So, tomorrow it might be something else, but we're having communication through the Father through these earthquakes. And that is what's important, is that we're, we're getting direct messages. Like I said, but you look these up and he might give you a chapter that he didn't give me. And it might be something specifically for you. And I think I have stumbled on something, but if it's not me, I will not give myself credit because I ain't that smart. It's the Holy Spirit that led me to it, to these earthquakes being messages. And yesterday was Genesis, today was Exodus. Lord only knows what tomorrow's will be. But he is talking. And now we, I think we've stumbled onto a way to get them. And I think that this is going to be something huge for a lot of people because they're getting direct messages. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And I, and I know it's, it's happening because yesterday was about the ark. Today was Exodus going to a new place. He's given us hope. And that's what I'm here every day to let you know you, the hope is alive. The rapture is going to happen. We just got to have ourselves always ready for it. And you all don't have that issue you always you're always ready make sure you put your uh, comments uh in the comments make sure you put your prayer request we've had a lot of people saying a lot of people getting saved through these prayers so hallelujah jesus is working through the channel people are getting saved and that's what's important that's why we're here every day one more brother and sister that's going right with us to that place in the sky that god prepared for us okay just another day fighting satan that's probably why we're being fought so hard it's because people are getting saved. And we're, we're putting out hope. And that's what Jesus is, people. He is the only hope. Because he went and built a place for us, and he said, hey, that's my word. I'm coming back. And he is. He's telling everybody under the sun that 2030 is the end of man's reign. That means any time the rapture could happen. We don't know how far we're going to go in here. We just don't. But like I said, I will be here with you each and every day until we get there. That's what I've told you, and that's what will happen. It's our safe place, and I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. We're 5,000-something now. It's growing. I've had to go in there because you got to watch in the comments. There's some people in there trying to sell things. I'm trying to get rid of the amount of there because they'll try to draw you in. Do not buy those. That's, that's, uh, they'll probably try to scam you. You'll see it. They're talking about $240,000 a week or something like that. Try to stay away from those. Them are or bots or something but I've been trying to block as many as I can so be careful with them in the comments a lot of stuff happening like I said with all these earthquakes today especially the 5.6 that happened right off the right off the uh, shore of California stood out to me that's California still quaking but there was some news a couple of days ago that I want to bring to your attention I didn't really get to talk about it yesterday and I find it very disturbing that 30 tons of phosphorus nitrate disappeared off a train. And I'm talking 30 tons, people. 30 tons of explosive has just disappeared. It's gone. It was on a train going from Wyoming to California, but it just disappeared. By the time the train got to its destination in California, the train cars was empty. Nobody knows what happened to them. Now, Let's hope it leaked out beside the railroad track somewhere and it didn't make it in somebody's hands. But here's the thing. This ain't the Wild Wild West. Somebody didn't go in there, stop that train, and take it out. Something's happened. I just don't know what it is, but I've got a horribly bad feeling about it. And you need to keep your eyes open. Because I have a bad feeling that that will definitely come back out into the public somewhere, sometime, very soon. So definitely keep your eyes on that one. Another sign of the times, people. Another sign of the times. That's where we are. Do not fear. Jesus is on his way. And we're getting ready to get out of here. Because you're seeing events like this take place. It's getting pretty wicked out there. Well, I think Lisa Boyce said it perfectly the other day. There's a lot of things happening in the background that even we can't see. And it might be a good idea because there's a lot of bad things. I don't know if any of you all got a chance to see Brother Aaron at God of Minutes video the other day about a... He was doing the things that was over top of Prince Charles's head with the 666. 
Do I think he's the Antichrist? No, not by any means. He's not in... The, the, the scripture tells about this guy being very scary. Prince Charles doesn't scare me whatsoever. He actually, I'm more scared of my cat. But I do think he plays a part. I think he's, he's doing some work for the Antichrist, but no, he's not the Antichrist by any means. It's described the Antichrist as somebody that makes every nation tremble when they see that, yeah, Prince Charles doesn't have that. Obama doesn't have that. That I'm talking this guy is going to be more scarier than Adolf Hitler, and none of these people are candidates, trust me. Like I said, I really don't care because we won't be here, but I know this guy from the Bible, this, this Antichrist will be horrifying. Every nation will be so petrified to go against this guy, and these guys do not fit the bill by any means. I mean, this guy, when he walks into a room, people are going to basically pee their pants. That Yeah, Prince Charles, <laughs> that, that ain't happening. <coughs> we had visions of him, me and a, a friend of mine, and we saw him, he was in his 30s. We know for a fact he's in his 30s. He's a younger man, and he's not older. He's not over 30-some years old, so he will be in his 30s. He's a younger man. I do believe he comes from a very rich, powerful, uh, very rich, powerful uh, family, but he will be very powerful once all this stuff starts but like i said you won't be here so there's no need to worry about it but yeah he's not older he's going to be younger and he comes from a very powerful family and he's already in place he's already working behind the scenes we just don't know who he is and we won't know because the restrainer keeps us from knowing that's why i say it's not prince charles it's not obama the he cannot be revealed until we're out of here. and you're not going to know him the people when we leave they're not going to know this guy they won't know him from Adam. We'll not know him. He'll, because he's been hid in the shadows very, very well until his time. He can't be revealed because Satan is not going to put somebody out there that everybody knows and knows every trick down their sleeve. It's going to be somebody they have no clue. They're not going to know this guy. Israel has never dealt with this guy whatsoever. But he's going to be able to talk Israel into doing god-awful things when he does. That's why I tell you, it's not anybody we see out there. They're working for him. Don't get me wrong. They play a part, but they're not him. He is still in the darkness. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody's ever seen him. He's in the background. Until we leave and we go home, that's when he will pop up shortly after we leave. So, no worries there. Like I said, we won't be here. No need to worry about it. Nobody, I mean, I know, I don't care who he is by any means. When I get to heaven, all I'm going to do is enjoy myself. I ain't going to be worried about anything that's going on down here whatsoever. I'm glad to get out of here, and that's all that's important. Hope uh, all of you guys have had a good weekend. It's been, I've not felt well today. I've just not been feeling it, not been feeling good at all. I was watching where we had some major solar uh, flares in the last couple of days. Now, it's funny that we talked about May the 19th. We all knew that that played a big part in something. Now, what ha another thing that happened on May 19th that a lot of people are not aware of, the solar flare that hit the Earth was so bad that it punched a hole through the magnetic field. That's how bad that flare was when it hit. And it actually penetrated the Earth. So that's another thing that happened on May 19th. So the flares from the sun is getting a lot worse. And so is the attitudes down here between other nations. It's now known that they're going to try to ship F-16s to Ukraine. We pretty much know that that's probably going to be a line in the sand. They'll probably end up trying to destroy those F-16s before they even get to Ukraine. But people, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before everything gets out of control. Everybody's been tiptoeing around this now for months, but it's going. when we start adding fighter jets into a place where they can cross the border into Russia, you might as well know that it's going to get bad, really bad, really quick. Eventually, this thing is going to go hot. NATO's been doing some very strange things on the borders of Russia. This has not made the news. It's something you will not see. But they are putting up a lot of defensive stuff and getting a lot of offensive stuff ready for their own places. And that goes from Finland all the way down to Ukraine. 
There's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of soldiers on the ground, including American soldiers, that are all up and down that border. They're moving a lot of assets from the Asian Pacific to Europe. Now this wouldn't even stand out to me if I hadn't seen what I saw many, many years ago with us in Russia. And even at the time when I saw it, I thought, well, it's not even important. Russia's not a superpower anymore. It's, I don't even know why I'm seeing it. It's probably just a dream. Then when I realized everybody else is seeing it and now seeing everything turn the way it is, I'm seeing it come to pass, which is horrible when you know what's gonna happen. That's why I tell you to be ready for the rapture because the event that happens between America and Russia is horrific. It really is. A lot of people will lose their lives that day. Lots of people. I'm talking in the multi-millions. So, best place to be is in that grand place in the heaven with our Father. So, if you're lost out there, definitely right now with the grace period, Get to know Jesus as soon as you can. Let me tell you something, it's worth every minute of it. I'm, I've told people this for years. If you don't have Jesus, you just don't know what you're missing. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> you know, a lot of times when we, we, we get with God, we kind of forget about all the little things that happens. Many years ago, <clears throat> probably about, it was right before my mom passed, probably about a year. Uh... I didn't want no pets, okay? I was kind of pets out. I was just done. I didn't want no more pets. But the, the woman I was with, she wanted two cats for her, her daughters. So we went to a pound to get these. Now, this is, I'm gonna, this is gonna give you a little background of what God does for you. He does things for you you don't even know you need. Well, she got two cats. I picked out my cat that I have now, which his name is Gabe. And I'm like, okay, I love that cat for some reason. I mean, I was like, I just went right to him. So I picked him out, and we took two cats home. Well, she ended up not wanting either cat. Now, she took her cat back, but I kept Gabe. And he became my best friend after my mom passed. And I really don't know what I would have done, but the Lord knew what was about to happen. And he knew that I was going to need company. Now, Gabe's played a huge role in getting me where I'm at now. I know that sounds crazy, he's a cat. But I'm telling you, he's the best animal I think I've ever owned. He's just a good cat. He don't mess anything up, he don't turn anything up. But he's just been a good friend. But God knew I was gonna need him. He knew I didn't want anybody else, but he did that a year before mom even passed. But that's what happens when you have Jesus. He's always, he's always taking care of you, even when you don't even know you need it. That's why I tell you, sometimes we forget about all the little things. Months ago, I was out and got a flat tire out in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'll never get this thing back to a garage. I didn't have a spare on me. And I, I was sitting there and just so happened, I, I literally, this happened at a gas station. So I go in, didn't even realize my tire was flat till I come out of the gas station. I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Just so happened a girl, a good friend of mine, I went to school with, was ha just so happened to be at this gas station. And God knew I was going to get a flat. And he had her there. Now that shows you what great timing he has. But he put me there. At that moment, he knew that moment my tire was going to go flat. And he had her there. And she took me and got my tire fixed. She didn't have to. She spent probably an hour taking me back and forth, taking me back and forth. But the thing is, he knew I was going to need that. I mean, he's just on time. But let me tell you something. You're, if you don't have him, you're missing out. There's been so many of those times. I couldn't tell you all the times how lucky we are. We don't even think half the time about all the small things that he does that we just take for granted. But he does so much more. So much more. That's why I tell you, when you have Jesus, let me tell you something, you're the richest person on the planet. You might be down to just a blanket in a tent, but if you have Jesus, you're the wealthiest person on the planet. And that's just the truth. We're that lucky to have him. And I don't know what I would do without him. So if you don't have him, 
I promise you right now, once you have him, you'll never let him go. That's why I said, when you're truly saved, you don't look back. You just don't. Because you know how it's, it's, there's nothing can replace him. There's just nothing. He's that wonderful and more. And I'm sure you guys have many stories just like mine, if you think about it. You think about all the times you was out in the middle of nowhere, but for some reason, somehow, backup showed right when it was time. How many binds has he got you out of, just like he has me? Always taking care of us, even if we don't even ask. Boy, he's an amazing father. And we're just one day closer to being with him, people. Just one day closer. So don't lose any, don't get distracted. Don't lose yourself to everything that's going on and all the distraction out there. Because Satan is trying to distract people. If dates come and go, just always know you're one day closer. I want you to smile. Don't, don't get discouraged. Because just know that Satan set a trap for us. I want you to always think that way. But Jesus, we know he's coming. That's a fact. That's his word. I'm here to tell you, people, he's our hope, and hope is alive. And I need you to spread that hope to others who don't know it in these dark, dark days. Just like the Stevens there in Britain going forth through the darkness, I need you to do the same thing. Because people need to know that there's hope in the darkness. Be that light for many others very important in these last moments that we have here like I said we don't know when we know it soon we feel it we see it he's giving us messages all we got to do is have ourselves ready each and every day watching the sky like he told us to do and we'll come here we'll talk we'll pray for the lost and the sick that's what we do and that's what's important today making sure that we don't leave anybody behind. And that's what's always important. That needs to be our goal. Don't leave anybody behind. Jesus didn't leave us behind. We can't leave him behind. Any of these people behind for sure. <coughs> now, I don't know if this will be the last video I do today. I have not got to my messages, people. Oh, they're two days backed up. I've been so busy. I've just not been able to get to them. But I appreciate you, each and every one of you and you the support this this ministry, I didn't ask you guys to, but thank you for doing that. Through the buy me coffees and through, I've, I've got, they, people want me to put my mailing address on there, it's on there. And different things that I have, they've all asked me to do this. I don't ask people to do it, but they do it and I appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I really, I'm telling you, I don't know what I'd do without you guys. You don't know me and I don't know you. But you guys have helped me more than you'll ever know. You're all the best company, that's for sure. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day that we're one day closer to being out of here. We know you're coming, Father, for it's your word. And thank you for blessing us each and every day for being able to have a channel here to come to, to have everybody prayed for. Reach out and touch each and one of these people, Lord. You know them by heart. You know these people that need prayer, that are sick and conflicted, that are in under these videos and these comments. These are your sheep. They come here. They know, Lord, that you're here. And they know that they can come here and put their names in there, and you're going to touch these people in Jesus' name. You're going to, you're going to be there for them, Lord. That's why you had me to do it, had you had us to put them in there, so you can reach out and touch each and every one of you. And we know many are being saved in these comments, and we thank you, Jesus. We know it was you. It was your idea. You brought them here. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing it. Bless all the watchmen and watchwomen around the world that each and every day that they're coming on here on YouTube, they're being attacked at every moment and every time they, they move. But I ask of you to watch over them and their families and keep them safe so they can keep spreading hope that you're coming. So they can tell the world what time it is that their time of man is coming to an end. I ask of you to reach out to each and every one of these families here and protect them with a shield at all times to keep them safe. I pray for all my brothers and sisters in every country, especially the ones when there's missiles flying, there might not be water, there might not be no electricity. I ask of you to send your holy angels to feed the young people and these people that have all these issues that are going on 
around the world. I ask of you to watch over them, Lord. Keep them safe. I pray for all the children, Lord, around the world that have been targeted for so many years and it's gotten worse and worse because we know the devil wants to destroy the children. I ask of you to put a shield around these children and keep them safe through these dark times. We know you're coming, my Father. So give us the strength to keep our prayer warriors going, and we've got plenty of them here on this channel, that they go forth every night and they pray and pray and pray and they keep us all safe. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for listening to all these prayers that go out every day, every night. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us and always protecting us. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven.